Assalamu alaikum everybody. Assalamu alaikum. We are going to wait for a few people who are, can please, you know, please can you uh, answer and we are waiting for that. So, so go on ahead and answer. We don't mind. We just want to start the story, okay? Assalamu alaikum everybody, you'll join us today, tell us where you're from, let us know in the comments what if you're you doing. If you need me guys, I'm right for you, okay, bye. We are um, discussing Trending Tuesdays, as usual on a Tuesday, where we come with the best stories from last week, or some of them, not all obviously, otherwise we'd be here forever, but today we choose, we've chose four for you, inshallah. Um, let us know where you are from in the comments, what you're doing, uh, how is everything today, inshallah, um, and so on, and let's join in the fun. So I'll wait a little bit more for people to come, and then we shall start, inshallah. Um, Layla is around, uh, she normally likes to join in these sessions, um, so she will pop in every so often. Inshallah. So do let me know where you're from and how is the weather where you are and what you are all doing. What time is it where you are? And uh, we shall begin shortly with some of the best stories from last week, inshallah. Today we're going to discuss an airport that has been named after Muhammad Ali. Um, we're going to discuss five facts in the Quran that have been later discovered, uh, much later, centuries later. Three intentions to avoid when you are reading the Quran and did Allah create women weaker than men? So we're going to discuss all of that inshallah. Assalamu alaikum Fatima Zara, uh, you're from Cape Town, South Africa, mashallah. How are you doing sister? Hi Fatima Zara, if, and if you, if anybody new here who I see, my name is Layla and I'll be popping in, I'm just playing. To, so I will do my story after my mom does all her stories, and my story is about um, my story is about. What's my story about, mommy? We'll see. Assalamu okay. alaikum, Tahira from Puerto Rico. Mashallah. How is it in Puerto Rico? I'm thinking it's much warmer than it is in Canada right now. What did you do just now? You climbed a mountain of snow, right? Yeah, I climbed a mountain of snow. Maybe my mom will show you the video. No, I won't. But uh, yes, yeah, she climbed a mountain of snow. Mashallah. It's just after nine o'clock in the evening, Fatima. Mashallah. It is now almost, well, it's half past three, 20 to four in the afternoon here. SubhanAllah. Assalamu alaikum, Abdul Aziz Aziz. How are you doing, brother? Hi, Abdul Aziz Aziz. Oh, thank you. Shazakallah. Okay, Fatima. Fatima says you are a sweetie pie. Mm. I love pies, by the She loves pies. <laughs> oh, yes. They're my favorite sweets as well as ice cream. And that's what we'll be talking about food. Really? Yeah. You will be. I won't be, inshallah. I will. I will. Okay, so let's start then. Um, mm. So we're, the first story that we're going to speak about is, of course, surrounding the great Muhammad Ali. Canada cold is insane. It is Tah Tahira, it is very cold. Today is where we are in Canada is minus nine, but it, uh, with the wind chilly actually minus 16, but it's windy today. So it's blowing all the snow into the face as well. So it's very, yeah. very cold. It, it <laughs> even hurted me when I was uh, on the mountain, it hurt my eyes. Yeah. I do like this, and then I open my eyes. But um, in some parts of Canada, it's even colder. So we are, alhamdulillah, we're very lucky. Um, yeah, we have so much snow outside that I made a snowman in the front. I made the snowman, but I broke the face, and it was so sad. Assalamu alaikum, Saydul Amin. How are you doing, brother? Hi, Sado. I mean, if any of you are new, I told you my name is Layla, and I'll be popping in and out, and I'll tell you my story after my mom. 
Assalamu alaikum, Irshad. Um, Hi, Irshad. Yes, um, Muhammad Ali is an, an American Hi. hero and pride of Islam and humanity. Um, this is our story, what we're going to talk about first, but let me go, go through some more comments and just just let me do this Layla go behind me if you're allowed I come um Lewal I've said your name right Lowell you're from Nigeria and it's 843 mashallah um salam al just like me salam alaikum Khan Imran how are you doing it's hot here we are yes you're because you're in South America South Africa so yeah, yes, I'm doing you are, good. you're having the summer now, right, sister? Like Australia, like New Zealand. So, mashallah, enjoy the sun. <laughs> um, uh, Layla is fine, alhamdulillah, aren't you? Khan is yeah, asking, brother just, Khan is asking how you are. Just my voice is like cracking. Yes, we all have colds <laughs> in our house, alhamdulillah. But we're all fine. Why alhamdulillah? Because you say alhamdulillah no matter what. Yes. Because you are still in good health despite the cold, alhamdulillah. Ah, I will get it now. Right. So the first story then is all to do with the great late Muhammad Ali. His legacy is very much alive in his hometown of Louisville in Kentucky, USA. Um, to honour him, they have named the Louisville International Airport after him. It is now called... Louisville Muhammad Ali International Airport and the mayor of um, Louisville, his name is Greg Fisher, he said Muhammad has left a legacy of hum humanitarianism and, of and athleticism that has inspired billions of people and one of the comments was he was a great legend and did a, 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 um, for humanity as well and he was. I mean, the more I read about him or the more interviews I see with him and how he spoke out, especially about Islam, mashallah, he really was a true champion in all sense of the words, not just boxing, but in everything. And he really did fight for Islam and try to explain what Islam really meant. So not only though is he admired by billions of Muslims, mashallah, but he is admired by billions of non-Muslims as well, just because of how great he was and how powerful he was, subhanAllah. So that's our first story of the week. What we discussed is that is in his hometown of Louisville in Kentucky, in the USA, they have named the airport after him um, in his honor. Um, so now it's called Louisville Muhammad Ali International Airport, mashallah. Fatima, I have an aunt who lives in Ontario, Oakville, alhamdulillah. Uh, I'm not sure how it is in Ontario because we are on the east. So we get the weather storms from the Atlantic mainly. But I know that, for example, in places like Alberta, which is more in the middle, but a little bit north, they're having temperatures of minus 30, minus 40. It's very cold there. So really we are, alhamdulillah, we have to be grateful that it's not as cold. Um, but it feels like it, I tell you. Salam alaikum, Diane. How are you doing, sister? Um, salam alaikum, M MD. I don't know how you say it. Med Shagor. Did I say that right? You have to excuse me um, if I am not able to pronounce your names. I try, um, but please forgive me if I do say them wrong. Um, Khan says, Mashallah. Uh, okay, brother, I don't read Arabic, so but I think you've written in English. Let me see. The hour of judgment is nigh and the moon is cleft asunder. Jazakallah khair, brother. Assalamu alaikum, Abdul Fatwa Baby Last from Germany, watching live from Germany. Where are you, brother, in Germany? I lived in Germany for a year, subhanAllah, uh, when I was much younger. And it's very cold there as well in certain places in winter, right? Um, inshallah, one day come all word except is that. We'll accept 
I think you mean everyone will accept Islam one day, right, brother? Inshallah, brother. Um, as we all know, Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world, and more and more people are coming to accept the truth, mashallah. Um, very cold here in New Hampshire. How cold is it, sister? It's uh, in, in, in New Brunswick, or where we are in Fredericton, it is minus nine to 16 so you know it's it's quite bitter out there but i can't complain because i know there are places in canada that are much much colder obviously right now subhanallah um the next um story i want to talk to uh, to you about is the quran and you know we all love the quran we all read from the quran regularly inshallah um and within the Quran, or the Quran, should I say, has held many facts within its glorious pages for centuries and centuries. And you know what? Just now, now in the last 100 years, or just a bit before that, maybe in the last two to 300 years, scientists are discovering what was already said in the Quran, meaning that you know more and more people are understanding what we've all, what we already know from reciting it in a regular basis so i'm going to go through three of those facts but you will find five in the link <coughs> excuse me i do have a cough and cold so the first one is and we made the sky a protected ceiling but they um but they from its signs are turning away and that is the quran 2132 now basically um this means that the sky is not just beautiful to look at it has a purpose subhanallah um and it plays an abs absolutely important role in our survival um alhamdulillah allah designed a mechanic a mechanism that ensures only harmless rays from the sun reach the earth um which is of course called the ozone layer the ozone layer was actually discovered recently in in 1913 but if you read about it in the quran it's there it's right there in black and white and allah tells us how it's protecting us subhanallah so that's the first fact of um what we are discussing the next one is and we placed within the earth firmly set mountains lest it should shift with them and that is in quran 2131 now the earth is constantly moving but we don't feel it because allah has placed massive mountains to hold it down this was unknown up until recently when ge geologists discovered that mountains had roots deep under the surface of the ground and actually they are stabilizing the earth now of course the quran told us this all those years ago but geologists have only actually discovered that fact now recently and subhanallah i don't know if you watch a lot of wildlife shows but you can find it if you watch these really brilliant shows like um planet earth or um the blue the blue planet um the david attenborough the narrator he he does actually talk about this he talks about the mountains and how deep they go and how that the earth is always moving we don't uh it doesn't go much further deeper than that but i mean we don't actually feel it obviously because the the mountains are stabilizing it subhanallah and allah tells us this in the quran but geologists have just discovered this recently subhanallah so it really is mind-blowing what the quran has mentioned and that people are only just realizing subhanallah and um the last one there is five but i'm just talking about three is and who sends down rain from the sky in measured amounts and we revive thereby a dead land and that's the quran 43 11. now did you know that every second 16 million um tons of water evaporate from the earth so that's every second 16 million tons of water evaporate from the earth which means the same amount must be replaced by rain okay 
Now, Allah maintains this balance in the process of the water cycle. And of course, science lessons, how the water cycle, you know about the water cycle, don't you? That the, it evaporates in the, what, you come and tell everybody about the rain. Layla knows about this because she did do it last year. Last year. What did she Can you remember? Mean? No. When the water evaporates and then it causes the clouds and they rain. Can you remember it? Oh, you can't remember it? She did do it last year, the water cycle. Oh, yeah. I remember it now. So when it rains, the ocean's water goes all the way to the clouds. And then it goes to the sun and then that's how it rains. Wow, she does remember a little bit about it. She did that in kindergarten last year, subhanAllah. They're the things they teach them very early this year. You mean in grade um, one? Anyway, um, water cycle was discovered in the 16th century. But we knew about it in the Quran much earlier on, subhanAllah. I'm reading a nice book. So excuse me. Oh, she's reading. So I'm going to put you that in and you can read the other two facts about that in that link. Um, but it is a very nice article. So please go ahead and read it. Uh, Fatima says, I particularly love that he chose to have his name Muhammad placed on the wall and not on the pathway where people would walk on his name. Yes, that's a really good uh, fact about Muhammad Ali when he was given the Hollywood, um, is it star? the star that they these actors and famous people get he refused to have it on the floor he had it on the wall mashallah so it's really something that we can admire subhanallah uh, diane it is actually warmer now it is 25 degrees fahrenheit i don't do fahrenheit diane i only do celsius <laughs> the brits sorry <laughs> so that is uh really some really wonderful facts um, that you can find in the Quran that was from Allah all those centuries ago and that yet we are only just discovering today or you know a few not in the last hundred years or so so subhanallah um Abdul I live in Gelsenkirchen is that where's that uh, it rings a bell I used to live in a small town I moved twice so for the first six months, I was in a small town called Ravensburg, um, which is near uh, the Lake Constance or Bodensee. And then um, in this last six months, I lived in Dusseldorf, uh, which I really enjoyed, actually, I have to say. Fatima, Leila, show yourself, please. Oh, she's gone to play, I think, again, but she will be back. And she did talk to you now. Well, she tried to remember the word cycles, subhanAllah. Um, that is an astounding fact about mountains, subhanAllah. Yes, it really is. Um, actually, before I converted, I was reading a book called The Miracles of um, Quran, or was it Scientific Miracles um, of the Quran? And it's a famous book. His name was Harun Yahya, I believe, who wrote this book. And that fact is in there regarding the mountains. Um, but I actually accepted Islam based on the embryo um, and how... Um, it looked like um, how, how the Quran described it and it just blew me away because there's just no way on earth anyone could could describe how an embryo looked at the time of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and they only just discovered it what around 40 years ago or something like that when they uh, were able to do the sonar and, and really study what the embryo looks like when it's formed inside the woman's womb, subhanAllah. So that was that was the scientific miracle that um, I converted on, subhanAllah. Diane says it's minus 3.9 degrees Celsius. Oh, still cold though, still cold. <laughs> Uh, shukran for the link. You're welcome, Fatima. MashaAllah from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, um, Abdullah. How are you doing? Um, uh, that is totally man, mashallah. Um, well, this book is fantastic and I would re recommend it for anyone, even Muslims. It's a really good one. If I try and find the link after the talk, I will put it in the comments for anyone who's interested. You can try and get it. Layla, yeah. where are you? Come here. 
The next link is um, about what we should avoid um, when we're reading the Quran. Now, we all read the Quran and we should be reading the Quran regular, so um, when we read the Quran, it should be it should be with the the intention of having a close and fruitful relationship with the law so we should avoid three things when reading it and the first thing that we should avoid when reading it is we shouldn't read it for intellectual pleasure now that doesn't mean that we shouldn't obviously be reading it or we we shouldn't apply our intellect we should but we should also remember the message that is being delivered in the Quran because you know many scholars many people have read the Quran and they've really studied it but they haven't come away with the proper message so what's the point if you're not going to have the proper message so that's what's behind that fact so yes of course you should apply your intellect but you also must feel the message and benefit from the Quran when you're reading it Number two, we shouldn't read the Quran to support our arguments. So in other words, if you, are, if you have one opinion and then you go to the Quran and you're looking for that opinion, you're going to read the Quran echoing your own voice rather than who it's from, which is Allah. So we should avoid that as well. And the third um, thing that we should avoid when reading Quran is we shouldn't read it for worldly gains. Um, if we do, then we're going to miss out on the really important message that's given in the Quran. And I'm just paraphrasing now, but you can find the hadith in the link when I put it, inshallah. The hadith says, um, and it's paraphrasing, that if we do read it for worldly gains, we will be thrown into the fire. And that hadith is from Muslim. Um, I'm going to give you the link and you can actually read the proper wording of that. But um, may Allah protect us all from the fire. And of course, may Allah protect us all um, when we're reading the Quran so that we are reading it with the best intentions, in, inshallah. Um, Salam alaikum, Haidera. Have I said your name right? How are you doing? Salam alaikum, Noor. Ideally, one should read the Quran and live accordingly. Exactly, Fatima. Um, it's really, it's really important. And when uh, Lady Aisha was asked about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, she was asked, I believe, about his character, and she basically said he was, or he embodied the Quran. So how he lived was through the Quran, and that's exactly what you said, Fatima. We should actually read it and apply our it to our lives and um, that is really important that we do that so of course we do need to read it with some intellect but we shouldn't miss out on the whole message of what the quran is trying to tell us again i just want to reiterate that the reading the quran is to build a fruitful and close relation with the law every time we read it we should feel um, that we are getting close to Allah subhanAllah. So we really must try our best to do that. And I mean Fatima. And the last story I want to discuss today, a question I wrote in to ask us, did Allah create women weak? Now this is based on everything that we're seeing right now, the inequalities given out to women or how women are treated in some societies. So this person was asking, did Allah create women weak? Is it Islam that makes women weak? Or is it culture that makes women weak? Well, we all know the answer to that for sure. Um, Allah did not create women weak. Actually, both men and women are honored in Islam. We are similar in terms of duties and responsibilities. We have to, women, have to carry out the same acts of worship as men. And the problems women face today are from corrupt ethics in our societies. So it's not because we are weak. Um, this, I think, is more of a cultural problem than a religious problem. Because when you look at Islam, Islam is the first to give the rights to women anyway. And on top of that, as you know, what, whether when we do a good deed and a man does a good deed, 
both of us are going to be rewarded equally. So if a man does a good deed and the woman does the same good deed, we're going to get the equal reward for that good deed. There's no uh, one who gets higher than the other. It's all based on piety and whether we're on righteousness and whether we're doing good and we're good people, subhanAllah. Um, of course, there are differences between men and women, but there should be, shouldn't they? Because we have different roles and we women can do things that better than what men can do and men can do things better than what women can do. And this is natural. And I don't see why so many people get so hot and bothered about this. Because, you know, this is the way we were created when all said and done. Allah gave women the beautiful and valuable um, capability of giving birth, for example. And we become mothers and we are raising the next generation, subhanAllah. And this is beautiful. And it certainly is a, the, a massive gift, in my opinion. It's also a big challenge and a big test. But it, or it is a massive gift that women are able to carry a baby and to give birth to a baby, give birth to mankind when all said and done. And we, I mean, you need to be strong to give birth and anyone who has done will understand that. Um, so we have many different um, characteristics or um, things that are different about men and women, but it should be like that. But at the same time, we will be rewarded the same. We have to carry out the same acts of worship. We have to do all those things. So there are not that many differences. And Allah did not create women weak at all. But societies and cultures, um, the, the way sometimes they develop, sometimes put on women. So it appears that women are weak. But actually, no, we're not. SubhanAllah. So women are strong and, and and all women are strong and they're they're more like girl they're they're mostly kind and not stinky like uh, men. <laughs> well <laughs> say things like that. But yes. Women are strong, but there are lots of kind men as well. We have to remember that, right? Salam alaikum, Tina from Tunisia. How is Tunisia? Hi, Tina. By the way, my my mom's uh, one of my mom's aunties called Tina. She is. I have an auntie called Tina. Salam alaikum, Daya. How are you doing? Um. Yes. So they are the stories from this week that we we've gathered. And um, we really appreciate that you are, you know, taking the time to watch us. Every Tuesday, um, I do Trending Tuesdays around the same time where I collect three or four stories from our newsletter. Um, they, these are usually our top stories of the previous week, not just, I mean, we have other top stories, but I just choose the ones that I think will get more... Um, feedback from you guys um so and things that i think you will enjoy a lot so I have my new video guys it you saw well, one live session my mom is wearing the same veil but this is this this is mine not mommy's so um we um we do this every tuesday layla usually pops on and we discuss the trending stories of the previous week so please feel free to join us as many Tuesdays as you can. I really love to see the same faces. I really love to see new people. And we have a chat as I, I'm reading out your comments as we go along as well. Um, it's around the same time every week. So please feel free to join us. And if you want to subscribe to our newsletter, it's free to subscribe. You don't have to <coughs> pay anything. And here is the link. So I've just put the link for our newsletter in there so you can go ahead and subscribe if you want. It comes out every Sunday, inshallah. Yes, Fatima, she she is a bit of a character. She likes to say these kind of things. <laughs> uh, Daya ta, ta, Tabarakala. Oh, I've lost your comment now, brother. Um, be strong, sister, with love from Indonesia. Jazakallah khair. And with love from us in Canada as well. Hello. Uh, I'm with my veil, not this, this person. 
Assalamu alaikum Abu Bakr from Nigeria. How are you doing? Um she's a khalaqe daya. Yes, she's uh she loves to come and speak to you all. Uh, yeah. And now she's showing you in her veil panel. Yeah, I'm going to stay like this until the live session finishes and then I'm going to take it off when uh, it's done and I can't see my mother again. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Fatima, it was actually the first time I turned into your program. She's like, hello, here, sister. Well, I hope to see you more, inshallah. Um, so, yeah, so I put the link to our news newsletter uh, there so please feel free to subscribe tunisia is wonderful we watched you last week and enjoy it my mother-in-law zora can't understand most but loves you and your daughter well Tina. i really appreciate that and you know what we are sending you and your mother-in-law lots of love as well and i'm very happy that she enjoyed it we love her as well and you so for that um may allah reward you for the effort you are making um hi Dara. Um, thank you everybody for both um, of us not only me oh. I really, i'll be working every live session i'm sorry about that i appreciate that very much <clears throat> if you don't want to um come on facebook all the time because you know many of you have lives outside facebook um you can subscribe to our telegram channel and on our telegram channel every day i put the three top links or the three top stories of the day on our telegram channel so you know you're not going to get bombarded with too many links or anything like that and you can feel free to subscribe telegram is similar to whatsapp and um, we don't have whatsapp group because whatsapp till now is not that secure and you know um as sisters as you can imagine we don't really want to be um under too much pressure with that but telegram is more secure um so we have opted to do a messaging app from telegram you can subscribe for free you'll have to download it onto your phone of course and then um we put three of the top links every day on there apart from saturdays saturdays i won't put because i i like to have a day mm. off <laughs> maybe we'll put a poll or something but please feel free to um subscribe to our Telegram, may Allah also uh, reward you, brother, as well. Mohammed Kamara, thanks again. You're welcome, brother. Baba, Jazakallah here. Carl Green, power to all females. I mean, I mean, brother. But Pat, um, I like, I like um, that comment. I'm going to just like that um, right now. <laughs> I, there's one last story. Now I am going to tell you. It's about um it's about food. But no food is not really on um, Islam, but I'm just gonna say it anyway. So the most important thing that you never should eat if you were a Muslim is ham. Ham, yes, it comes from which animal? You remember? No. Huh? The pig. Ham is from pig, and my, my mom's uh, mom and dad and auntie and her family, her whole family is Christian, except for my dad. Yeah, but we don't eat the meat from the pork pig, do we? Muslims aren't allowed to eat the meat from the pig, are we? If you're a Christian, you can eat it, but... Well, they shouldn't actually, but they do. No. But we do not, and we are strict to that, aren't we? So, you can eat all different kinds of food, but no ham at all. Because if you eat ham, then... then Allah won't be very pleased with you, will he? No, he won't really let, like exactly be like happy. He will be a little bit mad at you because he doesn't want uh, Muslims to be destroyed. So... <laughs> yes. Also... The next story I am going to talk about is wearing veils. I wear, you don't want to show boys your precious hair, do you? Or people you don't know, like girl, like girls you don't know, boys you don't know. Um, to so 
the reason why I'm saying this is because some people, uh, some Muslims are like not wearing veils. Yes, but we don't need to talk about them because everyone is on a journey. It's a very hard thing to wear or at the time. So it to everyone is on their journey and it's step by step, subhanAllah. But you're right, we shouldn't let men show our see our hair unless they are allowed, right? Unless they're like your husbands or part of your family. Exactly, good girl. So yes, she's learning these things slowly. And also, there's the next story that I'm about for kids and women and you know people. There's one thing that I want to tell you, the last story that I'm going to talk about. So, it is, um, what is it again? It's, it is the, um, um, can't exactly remember. Uh, let me have a moment to think about it. Okay. So in the meantime, I'm just going through your comments. Jazakallah khair, Brother Adam. Um, thank you for saying that about Layla. Jazakallah uh, khair, Sadhu. Very happy to see that all of you are here. And you're from Kenya, mashallah. Um, Mohammed, Brother Mohammed, we talk about different things on Tuesday. We talk about our top stories from the previous week. So... Um, you might have to watch this back to, if you've missed some of it, but we talked today about Muhammad Ali having an airport named after him, as well as five facts in the Quran that later science. I, I got it, I got it. One second. And three intentions to avoid reading um, the Quran. And did Allah create women weak? So we, you might have to watch it back if you missed some of them. Layla, you are too cute. I love you. You have a lot of knowledge. Keep it up, my girlie. Shazakallah khair, Fatima. Uh, may Allah bless you, dear sister. You're feeling motivated, mashallah, brother. Inshallah, you will continue to feel motivated. Jazakallah khair, Daya, you've raised a wonderful daughter. Daughter is a blessing from Allah, indeed. Jazakallah khair, brother, and may Allah bless you all, all, as well as you, brother, with righteous children. Ameen. May Allah bless you, Layla. Ameen, brother. Abdullah. So, the story that I was going to say, if mommy didn't get you of any, she promised that she will uh, get back to you, whoever she missed, because I'm going to say my story and I... Uh, yes, but you have to be quick because we've got to end now. We've, we've been a while. Soon, right? When I finish. So, any of you know that the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, told us to never lie. Do you know that? Because if you lie, it's a bad thing, and Allah won't be pleased with you, if, like, if you eat pig meat or something. Well, yes. You will be like, no, I, I'm, no, no, sorry, not talking with it, not talking. Well, no, because you can ask for forgiveness if you do something, and yes. Allah is always merciful, alhamdulillah. But you're right, we shouldn't lie, that's a good Yesterday, thing. Yesterday, guess what? You don't need to tell them about that. Okay. Right. <laughs> The, we have a group as well, which is mainly for Muslims, converted Muslims. But if you really um, want to join and help the brothers and sisters who are new to Islam, or if you are, if you yourself just want to find out more about Islam, you're struggling, please feel free. I've put the link in. It's our group is called About Islam 101, and um, you can join. It is mainly catered for new Muslims or Muslim reverts, excuse me, and it's also catered for those who just want to learn more about their religion. So please feel free to join and offer your help and advice to those in the group and also to learn, inshallah. Um, I appreciate it. The girl is good. Blessing to you. Jazakallah khair, Muhammad. Yes, uh, I really appreciate your comments. Layla, you, you've stolen my heart, subhanAllah. Jazakallah khair, sister. I really appreciate it. Now we're going to end today. I really appreciate all of you watching. Um, please join us every Tuesday around the similar time. Um, if it's half past three, my time. It's around half past seven GMT every week, uh, every Tuesday. And we discuss trending stories. And, you know, I really love to see you all. 
and Leila's often on with me, so please, please come and say hi to us every week if you can, inshallah. My dad's not going to be there. Uh, now I just wish and pray to Allah that you are all in the best of health and you all have a blessed week. I pray to Allah that all our brothers and sisters in oppressed situations around the world um, get the ease and patience that they may need. May Allah grant them with ease and patience to all the oppressed brothers and sisters around the world. And may Allah also, for anyone who's died in such terrible conditions, may Allah grant them paradise. May Allah um, bless you all with a fantastic week in health. I'm going to put you in my Quran, as I always do, because sometimes I think Quran, um, every night I think Quran before I go to bed. And and. Uh, may Allah bless you all in health and spirituality for the whole week. And just to answer you quickly, brother, her name is Layla. Jazakallah khair. Um, may Allah bless you all. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wasn't